Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to Awesome Godot. The entire idea is hopefully this is a new series where we showcase some of the coolest add-ons available for the Godot game engine. I'm thinking maybe one or two a month, uh, but it ultimately comes down to you guys. If you guys watch these videos, you like these videos and you want to see more, uh, let me know and I will keep making them. So the first thing we're going to look at today is something called Sprite Painter. Now I'm open to your suggestions. If you have other add-ons you'd like me to cover, do let me know. This one I think is a cool place to start because it gives new functionality to the Godot game engine that I think a lot of you would find useful. And that's Basically, it turns it into an image editor directly inside of the Godot game engine. So if you want to make some small edits, you don't have to go to your content creation tool of choice. You literally can make the edit right in the Godot game engine. Uh, the other cool thing about this one is, obviously, it is open source as well. It's MIT licensed, and it is actively updated. So it was updated in May to support Godot 4.0. 4.1 was literally just released, so it'll be interesting to see if it gets a 4.1 update or not. So this is Sprite Painter. Let's go check out how to use it, how to install it, and all of that jazz uh, right now, so here we are inside of the Godot game engine, and I'm going to show you exactly how this guy works. You select a node in the game world, nothing. You select a node with an image attached, and boom, you get this edit texture option. Now, if you want to go ahead and install this guy, it's easy because it's in the asset library. Just come into the asset library, keyword down on Sprite, find Sprite Painter right here, and download it. And then after that, all you need to do is go to Project, Project Settings, Plugins, go to Sprite Painter and click Enable. And then it is ready to go. And then you basically just select any image in your scene and click the Edit Texture button. Now this image is probably a little bit big for what I want to demonstrate. So let's pick a much cooler image. Oh yeah, that's a cool image. All right, so let's just size that down a little bit and we will work from there. So you see when I have it selected, I can come on over here to the edit texture and we can go from there. So there's easy things you can do right away. You can see here, you've got these uh, manipulation tools. I could bring it in like this and crop it. So if I want to crop it each direction, boom, you can do like that. If you need to crop down your image, you are done. By the way, this is destructive. So if I click the save button right here, it will overwrite my image. So it is actually not making a new version or anything, just to be aware of that. Now, even though it is destructive, one thing that is nice is it does have control Z under do support. So there you go. We just undid the edit. We just changed there. So you got a number of different traditional drawing tools here. The first one we got here is this pencil. You can turn guidelines on or off. All this literally does is paints one pixel, only one pixel. This makes a lot of sense if you're working like on a pixel project, you want to work one pixel at a time. You got a tools for removing jaggies. This is the, those steps as you're running on an edge here. And again, you can turn this guideline on and off if you so wish. So if you're working with a single pixel image, this could definitely be useful. Obviously, the color that is being set is available from down here. So we could switch out to say a blue color like so, and then boom, you're painting with blue. You also do have a color picker for picking colors from existing scenes, which is definitely useful. Uh, and then if you want to paint more pixels at a time, you do have a traditional brush like this. You do have control over how, if you're using a tablet, pressure sensitive it is. If it controls things like the size, the opacity, and the tinting, uh, I don't, I'm using a mouse. So obviously those are doing nothing for me. But here you can obviously do a paint job more. You can have a decreased hardness. By the way, they're all available for numeric input. Uh, these I'm guessing are percentage values. So here you can see, obviously, uh, less hardness, less strength behind it, like so. So your traditional painting tools are all available right here. We also, again, have an eraser. Uh, I don't get the eraser, to be honest, because it, it uh, no, I guess actually it's erasing it completely, and what it's showing me is the background image of myself, which is a little confusing here. So your traditional eraser, again, you can control the size of it, uh, how pressure sensitivity works if you're using a tablet, and so on. Uh, you do have a fill tool, you have a gradient tool. This uses the traditional Godot style gradient. So here we can actually create a new gradient like so. We can edit it accordingly. We can change out the colors and so on. So it is using traditional Godot gradients for doing things. You do also have a fill brush like so. Uh, I think this fills as you paint. Yeah, so see how it's not interacting with the other layers. Uh, then we've got here a clone brush. So you can actually so hold right mouse button and drag. So clone Okay, so here, clone to here, and then I paint, and it's going to paint whatever I have from the original clone. Traditional things you get from a normal painting program. Now, this pun was totally not intended, honestly, uh, but when it comes to not-so-normal features, you also have this guy right here, which is literally for painting normals. So when I hold down the left button, I can actually, so I'm picking the direction to paint in, and this is for painting a normal map. So the orientation I am painting it is going to determine the color of the underlying 
normal map. So if you're doing, if you want to create a normal for your 2D image, you can hand paint them like this. Now, truth of the matter is, I don't think too many people are going to hand paint normal maps, but the functionality is available here, which is kind of unique and kind of cool. You also have the ability to paint with shapes. So for example, I could paint with a square like this, obviously all color controlled down here, like so. Uh, you got various different options available here. And you got very different options. So I use the primary color or the secondary color from down below. Uh, and then you've got controls settings down here. They should be giving me, yeah. So anti-aliasing and erase mode are available right there. And then you have a line tool for predictably enough drawing lines. And then the last thing that we've got up here, this is actually quite cool, is this guy right here, which actually enables you to run a script. Now, that kind of glitched out. This is one of those things that I do find kind of disconcerting. You'll notice I actually just cached back uh, to something uh, that was there from before. What I find in order to fix that, so again, that was an image I was editing earlier on. This does happen sometimes with this plugin. I basically just head on back over here and do a deselection, uh, and then it caches it and works out correctly. So uh, here is our image right here, and then I can run image scripts on it. So we've got a number of different things. So if I want to do like adjustments to huge saturation values or channel curves and so on, I can do them all right here. One of the cool ones here is an outline. So I can do a a three pixel outline around my image. We will apply this brush right here. Uh, it does take a couple of minutes to run the script, or not minutes, but seconds to run the script. Uh, and then the script should, all right, come on. Oh, so it's only grabbing it to the edges right here. So let me just, let me add some more space see if that'll work out the trick. Try that one more time. So it actually did the outlines right here. It went around all the transparent areas, but I was kind of hoping it would do an outline of the image. So I'm actually gonna go back to the guy we were working on earlier on. So I can go ahead, I could discard my stuff right here and then my image will not be altered. If I did click save, it would have overwritten this image down here. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll delete this guy like so. Uh, we'll drop our icon into the world. Again, edit texture shows up right here. And there, again, you get some weird uh, caching issues with this guy. I find the easiest solution here is literally just click off over to the selection. You don't even have to click deselect. You just move over there and then it will fix things accordingly. Let's, uh, let's change the size of this image a little bit on all sides like so. Uh, we'll go back to our script option right here and click apply. And there you see it did. So why are you not expanding? I'm definitely doing something wrong on the expansion thing. Cause this should be pulling it out. Uh, but you see here, it is doing an outline trace of our image uh, with the outline. Again, there are other scripts available here as well. So you can do adjust the hue, saturation, and so on. So let's do this out to 45 and we can apply that one there. And that's going to switch out the hue. So you got these scripts available right here. I'm not actually sure where they're stored or if you can go ahead and create your own. Uh, you can also do a palette constraint or you can actually send in a palette texture and it will remap your image to work with that fixed palette. So there's some really cool image scripts here. Uh, I, again, I don't know if you can author your own or not. I, I imagine you can, but it's not really exposed in terms of how to do it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Sprite Painter, a really cool built-in image editor. There's definitely some warts there. I find the selection tools and the scaling tools to be a little bit unreliable. There is that caching issue that shows up every once in a while, but it brings like a whole kind of layer of power that Godot doesn't normally have, especially if you just want to do some quick edits to your image. Again, you don't want to round robin back to another tool. Uh, this could definitely fill in that spot. So let me know what you think of this add-on and this series in general. And do you have other add-ons you would suggest covering in the future episodes? of Awesome Godot. Hopefully you liked it. Let me know. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.